Shalom. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bah Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bah Hashem, Rakakradash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I came across this video here, brothers, and it sparked this particular lesson. And as you can see, it states at the top of the screen here human skulls from World War II discovered at the bottom of drained Ukrainian reservoir. I'm going to allow this video to play and I'm going to provide some commentary because what those of us in this knowledge and this truth understand. This is what Revelation meant by the third world cometh quickly because we understand and comprehend that World War III is coming. It's part of major prophecy. So not only is World War III coming, but something that I want the listener to understand is who's going to cause World War III to come into fruition. And what I want to do there is I'm going to pause this video here and some... Bear with me one second, brothers. And... This is the image, brothers. This is the symbolism. This is the correct representation of what our Lord, our Savior, who's going to bring World War III about and save the nation of Israel out of the time of great tribulation. This is what he looks like. Not that I want you to worship this image, but the scripture states, believe on me as the scripture has said. You have to consider the scripture states he has skin like bronze, eyes like fire and hair that's likened unto wool, that's white in texture. Even the book of Revelation states that he, when he comes, he's gonna have several crowns on his head, which is symbolism for the other nations that he's gonna pound into dust, into powder, for what they did to the nation of Israel. Even look at the fire that's behind him. Doesn't the scripture states that our power is a consuming fire, is he not? This is, this, is a, this is a great depiction, brothers. You need to have this mental image in your mind because Jesus Christ has been pushed for way too long. And we need to push not only the name of Yahweh Shai, but the correct image as well because this, this is who we look forward to coming. All right? Now let's go from here. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Let's scroll down to the King James Version. And it reads, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And the name of the Lord is what? Yahweh. You can look that up easily in the blue letter in your own time. Let's go from there. So if you have to consider if the Lord is a man of war. Remember, the son is an exact imprint of his nature. So the son is a man of war. Is he not? Jude tells us in Jude chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Let me go back. Pardon me, brothers. Jude chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness. Of all their defiant words, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You see, let's go from there. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 16. This is how the Lord, this is what spirit the Lord is coming in when he comes with that, with, with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people and many will be those slain by the Lord. You have to consider something. The Lord states, my word will not return unto me void. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely, as I have planned it, so will it be. And as I have purposed, so will it happen. Let's go from there. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 33. At that time, those slain by the Lord will be everywhere, from one end of the earth to the other. They will not be mourned or gathered up or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. Ooh, fire. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 2. The Lord is angry with all the nations. His wrath is on all their enemies. Right? The enemies being the enemies of the nation of Israel. And if you want to read up on who the enemies of the nation of Israel are, it's Psalms chapter 83. Remember, all the nations have conspired against us. But this is what the Lord says he's going to do. He says, or it says, he will totally destroy them. He will give them over to slaughter. Their slain will be thrown down. Their bodies, pardon me, let me say this again. Their dead bodies will stink. The mountains will be soaked with their blood. Let me come out of this. Let's go, with, let's go to Joel 
chapter 3 verse 2 I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat there I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance who's your inheritance Lord who's the apple of your eye my people Israel because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land you have to understand the Lord doesn't love everyone Okay, the Lord is going to destroy these nations and put them under submission because what they did to the house of Israel. How do we know? They cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes. They sold girls for wine to drink. And what else they do, Lord? Now, what have you against me, Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistine? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are repaying me, if you are paying me back, listen to what the Lord says. I will swiftly and speedily return on your heads what you have done. Woo, that is fire. You got to consider something. This is one of my favorite scenes from the movie 300. And as it states here, the dead as a barricade. This is just going to be a walk in the park to what the Lord is going to do. You got to consider and what's stated in Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. The Lord is going to gather the kings, the leaders of this earth, which is called in Hebrew Armageddon. Okay? Remember, remember it's going to be the battle of battles. All right? Let's go from there to Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. This is what John saw. And he said, remember, Jude mentioned this long ago. So did Isaiah and the other prophets. And John, the revelator, he's going to further prove the point. Remember, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And I look, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. What's the name of the father? Yahweh. What's the name of the son? Yahweh Shine. Like the scripture states, what is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? Remember, when you come into this knowledge, you learn the name of the Father, the Son, and you are sealed with the proper understanding of the scriptures. And hopefully, through faith, we'll be one of the elect. We'll be of that governing body, that 144,000 men that's going to rule and set up the kingdom of heaven. Let's go from there, right? Something that I enjoy <laughs> is the angel even made a public, he made a public service announcement in the book of Revelation chapter um, 19 verse 17 and 18 and it reads and I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying come together for the great supper of Yahweh so that you may eat the flesh of kings generals and the mighty of horses and their riders and the flesh of all people free and slave great and small and these these people who are going to be slaughtered are going to be you know the armies of the other nations also it's going to be two-thirds in there but when the lord comes remember he's going to gather his elect right those of us who have been refined those of us who are sealed with the name of the father and the son with the proper understanding of scriptures right which i hope and i pray brothers i'm a part of that number let's go to second ezra let's go to second ezra chapter 13 verse 2 and 3 because Ezra saw the same thing John the Revelator saw and lo there arose a wind from the sea and it moved all the ways thereof and beheld pardon me and I beheld and lo that man waxed strong with who with thousands of heaven and when he turned his countenance to look all things trembled that were seen under him got to remember these people are going to fight even though they are afraid of the Lord when the Lord shows up on his chariot with with, with the 144,000 right the Lord is going to put the spirit on them to fight even though they're going to be completely destroyed how do we know let's scroll down to verse 8 right and read on down and it states after this I beheld and lo all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid they were scared and yes, dirt fight. The Lord is going to put the spirit on him to fight anyway. Verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, I mean a blast out of the chariot, out of what they call the UFO, as it had been a blast of fire out of his lips. 
a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Verse 11 is the point. That's why I played that video of those skeletal remains. Let me pick up at verse 11. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell, which violence upon them the multitude which was prepared to fight and burn them up, everyone, so that, so that upon a sudden of the innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived, only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Now let me go back to this video. Well, let me go back to this because this is our Lord. This is coming for us. Get that image of white Jesus, Caesar Borgia, out of your mind. This is what's, this is what's going to be of those other nations, which I thought was a beautiful depiction of these other nations. Man, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me come out of this. Let me go here. Let me close out, brothers. All right? As a reminder, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and before me was a white horse, meaning a chariot, whose rider is called Faithful and True. Remember the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? With justice, he judges and rages what? War. Our Lord is coming, man. He's coming to redeem the house of Israel. He's coming to save us. He's coming to gather this elect, to gather the elect, pardon me, and it's going to be the best thing that we've ever witnessed and I pray that I'm a part of that number and I hope and pray by way of the Holy Spirit you have been edified brothers. Shalom.